What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Middle Ground. I am Chris Corsini, and today I am with Brendan Durrell. Uh, you can find him on Instagram at Brendan Durrell, B R E N D E N D U R E L. He is an amazing man. Maybe some of you remember him from last year when we did um, an IG live together during our uh, Elevating Black Voices series. Um, he teaches Tantra, breath work, cacao ceremonies. He's been on Too Hot to Handle. Season three just came out on Netflix. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to let him introduce himself. We're going to have just a free-flowing conversation. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll let you take over from there. Hey, what up, Chris? Thank you so much for allowing me on a uh, middle middle. Oh, fuck. What is it? Middle child? <laughs> let's, let's, let's middle do that again. Child. No, you know what? We'll keep that in. Middle child is actually, um, I didn't even realize that. That's so funny. I am a middle child. Middle child is my music name. And this is middle ground. So there's a lot of middle. Yeah. It's a lot of middle. I was like, wait, what is this? You're like, is where, it where am I? <laughs> Thank you for inviting me into the middle. That's, that's what I'm just saying. Let's meet in the middle. That's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like this is, um, I'm really privileged and I'm grateful that um, you're allowing me in this space. It's um, it's special and I really appreciate what you do and your work and it inspires me and I'm sure with so many. So just to be able to have a combo with you, kick it and how I feel, it's like artists, we get to talk and just talk about the world and what's going on for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's beautiful. Well, thank you for joining me and there's definitely a lot to talk about when we talk about the world because shit is crazy right now oh my god <laughs> um i mean yeah i guess we could it's funny because i had planned this conversation to go one way and then when we first connected sort of before we recorded um brendan was like oh how are you like how are you really though because you know like things are a little bit crazy at the moment with when we record this it's the end of january I didn't post the January horoscopes. Some people are freaking out and it's really, and I'm not even just like saying that like casually, like some people are like coming for me and my team. Like today, someone was like, basically, fuck you guys. Like, how dare you be trying to sell all these things now and trying to make money and go get a real job and all this kind of bullshit. Um, so we kind of thought that the episode would eventually move in a direction of discussing that, but I feel like why not just start there because that's what we can at least talk about. And when I talk about starting there, it's like the shadow self that's coming out um, in a lot of people, the insecurities, the toxic attachment or dependent styles that people carry. You referenced people sort of creating like this image of us in their phone and what that means to them. And when we break out of that, all of a sudden, like they don't know what to do and what to react or how to react. Um, so yeah, I kind of wouldn't mind hearing you just unpack that a little bit if you feel so called to. Yeah, absolutely. And first off, I, I'm sorry that's happening to you and your team, but you know too, as it's it comes with the territory. You know? Yeah. And um, yeah, I feel it's really relevant because it's still like, a, it's a charge, like it's within us that, um, and it's still in you, you know, like, like that feeling of uncertainty because also you lead a great team. And it's like when shit like that happens, I know you're like, fuck, like I'm a leader of this team and people are threatening me and my pride. They're, def they're, they're, they're literally threatening us. So I get it. And um, what I was referencing earlier, it's like, especially with social media, um, we show our personalities on social media. We become so um, invested in serving, supporting people, and then also people feel that. And we're showing up on their phone every day. And if we think about the phone itself, the phone is literally like, a, it's, it's the new age, it's a new part of our body. It's like a limb. When people lose their phone, they freak out. Think Ooh. about it, it's like it's an addiction. So we're showing up on somebody's body part every day. Like we're in this space, like talking to it and they see our face and our radiance. And naturally we're going to become a part of their daily lives in some kind of form, in some kind of way, no matter which way it is. And I feel it's really, it's, it's very common for people to 
mistake us to think that we're only one way. And that's because we talk about healing that we're just love and light. That if you push us in a corner, we're just going to curl in a fetal position and accept it. And for me personally in my life, um, it's, it's like the age old quote. It's um, I'd rather be a, a warrior in the garden than a gardener in war. And that's how my healing journey, I, that's how I lead it. And um, I'm always joking with some friends. It's like, I'm originally, I grew up in New Jersey and New York and there's a deep part of that culture still in me all the time. Like a Tim wearing like stomp some shit out if I actually have to. <laughs> and, and for me, it's like, what gives me permission is that I'm human. People want to dehumanize me, dehumanize you because we're not filling their needs. So I'm going to stop right there for now because I know you have some things to share in regards to that. Yeah, I just, sorry, I have um, my iPad here for everyone who's watching. That's what I'm sort of just jotting things down as he talks and little ideas come through. And the first thing is like, I'm also from a family where like my dad is half Italian, half Czechoslovakian and like doesn't fuck around. So it's like, I am literally conditioned to, for example, chase someone down the highway for 30 minutes until we like drive them off the road and pull them out of their car window and beat the shit out of them. That is what I think is normal behavior. <laughs> like, so for me to undo that program in my mind was a lot of work for me to deal with a lot of my own anger and insecurities and um, outbursts and things like that. That takes a lot of, um, a lot of shadow work. It takes a lot of self-awareness to be able to control those impulses. So when this type of shit happens, it is, I have to be really conscious of how I want to move forward because if that person was in front of me saying that and threatening Daniela, my assistant, and telling us to go get real fucking jobs. And like one of the emails was like, who even, who's even reading these emails? Like you're trash. Like you need to learn how to read better and do what I'm telling you to do. And I was just not only disgusted that people think it's okay to talk to people like that. I would literally like part of me would want to pick up a chair and break it over her fucking head. And I'm just like, so yeah, there is a side of me that I think people don't realize I struggle with um, needing to control, um, not even struggle. I don't, I wouldn't say I struggle with it actually anymore. I really don't, but it's there. And it's like, if I want that beast to come out, then like I can feed it. And like, we too are human and sometimes just want to like punch somebody in the back of the head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do, I, do we do that? No, because we know the consequences. We know energetically what's going to happen. We know there's karma, blah, blah, blah. So like, I think now I'm in a way better state of making those decisions. And I've never really been a violent person, but there is that part of us that like, yeah, you're from Jersey. It's like, don't come for me. Trust me. You're, you're coming for the wrong fucking person. You know what I mean? So I feel that defense, um, energy and that sort of like very almost like Mars driven, like masculine sort of um, fight or flight. It's like, well, I'm going to fight. Do you know what I mean? So those people are just a whole fucking, it's just a lot. It's frustrating to deal yeah. with, especially when, for example, we released like five different programs in January, two of them being pay what you can. And the other two being like $20 Canadian one of them is $18 Canadian. And the most expensive is I think $44 Canadian. So it's like, fuck off. Like I'm not charging a thousand dollars a program. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like these are accessible programs. They're affordable, they're helpful. And you're more than happy to spend a hundred dollars on drinks and dinner, but you won't spend $30 on something that you can have the entire year. And then you want to yell at me and my assistant because we're not giving you free shit. Like, it's just, it's such an ugly energy to witness. And I think to tie it back to what you were talking about with the phone and being a part of their body now. It's like, we've created this addictive cycle where they're going to this phone to get their dopamine fix because they need whatever they need from that experience. And all of a sudden now they're like, well, I've been getting horoscopes for the last 12 months. There's no horoscope here. It's like they went into withdrawal and some people, most of the people were like, 
oh shit, like, A, I hope you're okay. Like I got a lot of people being like, are you cool? Like you didn't do a horoscope, which I was like, okay, these people are actually just checking on me, which is super fucking cute. Um, but then you get people that are like, where is it? Why isn't it here? What are you fucking doing? Go get a real job. Like, and I'm just sitting there looking at these people being like, how sad that you like aren't getting your fix right now and you don't know what to do with yourself and you have so much pain inside that you need to lash out at other people who are doing really nice things for you. It's like, it's crazy. So yeah, I just, when you talked about that like addictive cycle, it's like, they're just not getting their fix and they don't know what to do with yeah. themselves. It's crazy. Yeah, you said that's some powerful shit you just shared and, and it's, yeah, it's, you're a part of their dopamine hit. Like literally, you're a part of that. And it's like, like what? So like when we break it down and then we're part of that and then also we're part of them masking their pain in some kind of way. So it's like, if they don't have that kind of pit, it's like, now we're gonna be a root cause of their pain because I didn't, you didn't supply them the dopamine to mask the pain. And right. the thing is too, with this work, it's like, like, that's why I love my Instagram audience. I love the people who are invested into my page because I've grown it um, organically all these years and people know what they're gonna get from me. They know how I deliver stuff and they also know that it's, um, they, they, most of them get the messages and I feel all of them get the messages. Like people who make like snarky comments and stuff, they don't last long. Like they just bounce right. off. They just can't, they can't hang with the, with the vibe, with the frequency. So I feel it's the same with this. Like I consider these moments for you as well. This is literally like a, this is a purge. It's a cleanse. It's just like you lighting up some sacred plants to release it, you know? So I think it's a blessing. And, and one thing too, it's like, um, it's just like the scammers out there. Like, oh uh, the like it's to, to me, to me, I see like these people who like that same energy as the scammers. It's like, we speak about it now to get it off our chest to clear the charge. However, it's like, we can't just give them any more energy. We just gotta just block them. Like actually no voice of reason. It's like, you're done. Like you're off the ship. There's somebody else who can support your urges. And I find that another thing that is so weird is we get so many people, not so many, but we get quite a few that are like, oh my God, you need to do something about this. I just lost $200 because I got scammed because I sent money to this account. And they send us a screen photo. And it literally is like, Chris, SSSS666, Corsi, me, 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 oh, 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 five, five, five. And it's like, I sent $300 to like, Georgia Fernandez 163 at msn.net. And I'm like, are you reading what I'm reading, bitch? Like, why would you send money? Why would that ever be me when I sell everything on my same fucking website all the time? And what is sad and unfortunate is that these people are so desperate for answers and desperate yes. for help. And I think that is just a reflection of how misguided and mis um supported and yes. um, like like our society has just created an environment where people are in that level of desperation and that I really feel compassionate about but don't be coming to me because your third eye is so fucking closed that you like wire transferred to like fucking Margaret Joe Blow 629 a thousand dollars I'm like what do you what do you want me to do with that? Like, <laughs> I can't do anything with that information, ma'am. So yeah, I feel like it's just, I don't know. It, it really is out of control and I feel bad, but like you're saying, I can't, I put it up on my stories a couple of times. Yeah. There's nothing else I can do and I'm not gonna waste my time replying to all these people. And Yeah, and that's where the compassion piece comes in. Cause for me, like the greatest act of compassion is for yourself and knowing that you can't help all these people. And it's just letting them go. Like, just like, all right, like, don't even respond. It's like, that's not my issue. That's not my problem. And it's like, with the most love, like we're not here to service the individual. We're here to serve the individuals in the whole together. Right. Like this is like a community effort, but yeah, like that's the most compassionate thing I feel with this. It's like, yeah, they're hurting, true. Um, they, they're looking for somebody to tell them what to do. They're not really finding the messages in sovereignty and actually applying, like I need to do the work. It's not about just going, this is why people get scammed because they're relying on other people. Right. That's simple. You can't get scammed if you're in alignment with yourself in this kind of way. Um, it happened to me. Like um, 
a few weeks ago. Like I was like, oh, I made it. I got a scammer. I made it. I was like, I'm like the rest of them. I was like, yeah, mama. I called my mom. I was like, ma, I did it. Um, <laughs> There's a fake account pretending to be me. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I got like a hundred, hundreds of messages like saying, is this you? Is this, I'm like, it's not me. Like, like, first of all, I would never charge anything for $60. Like I value my time, you know, like that's me personally. It's like 60 bucks, not nah, fam. Like, and I would never slide in your DM asking for money. No. And that's the other thing. Like if you're listening, like nobody out there, no right-minded centered aligned healing practitioner is going to slide into your DMs and say, my beloved, you are cursed and the ancestors can break the curse for $150 or for $60 or like, yeah, they, they say that you can get a text reading from me for 25. And I'm thinking, you think I'd be doing $25 fucking readings with a platform of half a million people. It's just like, I don't have time for that, babe. Like I don't even do personal readings. It's like, same. It, yeah. It's, Oh God. So yeah, I like what you said though, too, is that these people aren't looking to be supported by us and finding their answers within themselves. What these people are doing are looking for us to tell them what to do. And that's a huge fucking issue. And I think not to get like too political or to like turn this conversation into something it doesn't need to be, but I think a lot of this whole COVID pandemic is really also showing us that so much of the world is not asking questions or following their internal compass. They're just saying, yes. Oh, this is what I have to do. Yes. Oh, this is what I have to do. Yes. Oh, the, and it's like, at what point do we make the change from yeah. external um, influenced answers and external people telling us what to do and we start navigating our own course. And the sooner you can navigate your own course, then you're in alignment. And when you're in alignment, you actually start reaching new levels of awareness, new connections, real abundance. Like there's all these things that come with it. But I feel like everybody's just so fucking asleep right now. And it's like, again, not even about the pandemic, about these people that are like, I sent $200 to Joe Blow for a read. It's yeah. like, wake up. What are you, what yeah, is wrong? It's a, it's, it's a huge reflection. Like all of this, like the hatred towards like you not supplying something and also the scammers, people getting scammed. It's all a reflection to the, to the macro. It's all a reflection. Like everything that's happening in our personal lives is playing out out there in the massive scale. So for me, it's like, aha, that's, that's what the game of life is, is dishing today. But, but, and um, like my prayer is that people like that get there in this life. And if they don't, they're not meant to and it's okay but it's like on your journey of getting there it's you're not going to be able to survive in my space because I don't tolerate it and that's exactly one of the emails that came through that I'm not kidding in like almost a year and a half or two years that we've been doing this like real really professionally I've never read something that disgusting and like I responded my response was so good. Like, I love that I'm such a like asshole Gemini sometimes, but like really well <laughs> clean, like a clean response and not being really rude or disrespectful, just like laying shit out. And um, yeah, I basically said like, unfortunately, I don't think that we're a vibrational match to continue supporting you on your journey. So please unfollow me. And if you don't want to unfollow me, then I'll find you on Instagram and block you because I'm not interested in connecting with people like you, because this is not the kind of energy that I'm cultivating within my community and how dare you think that because because she made reference to like I've supported you by donating for so long and I'm thinking if you for one fucking second think that a donation or any sort of financial contribution is providing you a free pass to attack my assistant then like I'm sorry, but you're fucked in the head. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know where, and I said this, I don't know where this behavior was modeled to you in the past, but this is completely unacceptable. So like the two don't equate, you know what I mean? Like you can't, yeah. it, it just doesn't make sense. So I almost want to take a side step from this conversation and like, okay, so we kind of have we're seeing a common thread right now with a lot of people. We've talked about a lot of different energies that are coming up. What, um, what do you do um, for other people that, sorry, let me clarify this. If other people are experiencing what we are experiencing, what would your recommendation be outside of 
not investing into it? Or like, do you have any tools in your toolkit um, for them? Or on the flip side, the people that are in that desperate state of like emotional chaos or reckoning or just like out outlash and whatever are there tools that you think would help them um so for example meditation breath work like what do you find it's really good for I guess working through either about to attack and trigger somebody or I've been triggered and attacked yeah this is great and absolutely we'll sidestep from this because it's um, but we needed to have this conversation because it's 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 the realest thing right now that's happening to many people not just us Totally. And, and I won't speak into the people um, who are getting triggered. I'll speak into people in our experience and let's say who the experience comes to um, because I feel the people who's initiating it, they aren't, there's no amount of tools. Like I can send them Jesus, Buddha, Krishna with the bow on top and they'll still be like, no, I'm not home. That's just, you know, right. that's, where I feel they are. So they're not in the state of seeking. They're, they're in the state of just um, taking. And I think too, so, sorry, uh, just before we get into um, presenting this to the listeners as like, you need to be a teacher or you need to have, you know, a large platform to be experiencing this, like this type of shit, like what you said before happens on a micro scale as well. This could be happening with your family, with friends. This could just be in a store where you do something and you do something that is outside of what others have expected you to do. And now you've created a clash in the experience and now they're attacking you or they're treating you disrespectfully or whatever. So you could be on the receiving end of this in a lot of different ways and scenarios. You don't need to be, you know, a online spiritual advisor, yeah. like me or no. Brendan, but, um, but yeah, if you are receiving that to any degree, please, like, what do you recommend? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great that's a great piece right there because it happens all the time in, in small family units. I have a I have a friend. She um, whenever she goes to London, she stays with her friends. Um, and when she does that, her friends are kind of tight with money. Um, and because she's staying the night, when they order like Uber Eats or something like that, like they expect her, they expect her to take on the whole tab of Uber Eats. And when they know that she's doing that, they go ham on the order. And it's like this thing, like they're like in her closed circle. They expect her, oh, we're giving you a place to stay. So you should be um, like paying for our meal. You, I donated to you, so you should be giving me free readings. Right. So, but I that, that just wanted to paint that picture. So this happens on smaller scales as well with people and family units and friendships. Um, and the work that I do, I, I'm all about the nervous system. I'm all about um, just coming to peace with the nervous system. I always say, like I say in my Instagram profile, it's like, um, if meditation made love with 90s R&B, like that's pretty much the experience of being around me. That's, that's literally what it's like. Um, and I want that for everybody. Cause you know how the meme goes, if it ain't like 90s R&B, I don't want it. And it's yeah. like, that's, that's how it is. And so in regards to my teachings with Tantra, um, my Tantra is more of a, it's a self-cultivation. It's referenced as white Tantra. White Tantra being, that is just me practicing self-cultivation with myself. Red Tantra is when you're partnered with somebody who are actively in a white tantric practice, but they unionize together. So in my practice, because I'm not coupled, it's, um, it's all about just regulating my nervous system and being at peace with my thoughts. And when these things happen and these things come in, like these situations, it's of course I get angry. No matter how good I am at meditation or breath work or whatever, no matter whatever, I still get angry. It's part of the human experience. If any of you listening think that um, people are exempt from anger, it's you need a reality check because we all come from the same primal kind of history. Um, but breath, breath is the huge thing for me. I always take a beat and I take my deep breaths and not just the ones where it's just like, it's like I go in, like I'll go. I get deep into my fight or flight part of my nervous system and I try to get rid of that shit. It's just like if a, a, an antelope got away from a, a lion on the Serengeti, what does that antelope do when it gets back to the pride? Luckily, it goes, it shakes itself off. It has to get it off the body. So 
I'm making sure that I'm taking this off my body because naturally as an empath, I'm taking on shit anyway. So I got to do a little dust off. And breath is the number one thing I do first. Second thing I do, um, laughter. Like I laugh at things. Like when things come in, even if I'm not in a mood where it's like, I don't like I'm angry and I don't feel like laughing. I actually force myself to laugh. This is like, wow. Some of you are probably gonna be like, what? You force yourself to laugh? I promise you, you go in the mirror when you're angry, start laughing. Even if it's like an angry, uh, and keep doing that for a minute or two. Naturally, you're gonna start being like, what the fuck was I mad about? Right. Like, what was I mad about? Like Alan Watts and many like traditions, they did like laughing meditations. Alan Watts, when he was lecturing in San Francisco, he would walk into the lecture hall and with his briefcase, silence, all like the hundreds of students there waiting for him to talk. And he would put his briefcase down, look up in the lecture hall, and then he would just start laughing like a madman, just laughing at his very old, rustic, very eloquent British laughter. And he was just going at it. And then next thing you know, like everybody's like, one person's looking at each other, the next, and then they start laughing. And the next thing you know, it's contagious. It's a contagious it's happening. Everybody's laughing. And you're like, what the hell is happening? I don't know, but I'm laughing because the energy of that cannot be denied. So breathing and then laughter are the two ways that I personally deal with these kinds of things because um, it's almost like when the Hulk says, you won't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> I don't want to get angry. I just don't. Like, that's not what I do. And what most people have to see, like all of us, and I'm sure you're listening, you're on a healing journey. So don't deny your anger. Don't deny these emotions. Yes, you don't go and harm people. You don't disturb people. You don't do that. However, if you're experiencing anger, allow it to be inside of you. Don't shame it. Don't shove it down, especially um, my dudes out there, my men listening. Like, don't shove it down. Let it express out in a natural way. But, um, but yeah, that's how I deal with it because I just don't like the way it feels. It's like when you wear like tight ass pants, like super tight, like the ones you got to peel off and you're wearing them for hours. And then when you finally get home, it's like, oh, why was I even wearing those? Like, I want that feeling every day. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because it's like what you're describing is literally like alchemy in its like purest form. It's like, okay, I've, ex I'm experiencing anger. How can I convert this into something that is more useful and is going to, in fact, raise my vibration because the goal is to always either regulate or increase your vibration to a higher state of being, right? So like, yeah, anger is going to be obviously a quote unquote lower frequency if you wanted to label it as such. Um, and then, yeah, if you, if you literally start just staring at yourself in the mirror and laughing and I've, I feel like I've done that before too, with just like something's happened and I almost am like in such shock that I don't know what to do. So I just randomly laugh. And then eventually I'm like actually laughing. And then it's that same experience. I'm like, what was, wait, I'm sorry. What is fucking happening right now? It's like, so yeah, you're literally alchemizing that energy, taking it from one state and, and turning it into another state. Yeah. And, you know, and this, this is Tantra. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about that too. Yeah. Like, exactly. So that then converts into the, realm of tantra sort of speak where um you're taking one thing and you're turning it into another and you're using your body to do that we are that mm. tool um so tapping into the nervous system and then being able to i guess begin to channel that tantric energy which yeah for the longest time i always thought was um sexual just just based off of how sort of I've been familiarized with the theme of Tantra, but I've never really been able to look into Tantra. Yeah. Um, and you said white Tantra versus red Tantra, white being more solo individualistic um, people understanding how to use that tantric energy, which doesn't necessarily need to be sexual. And then red Tantra, when two people who know how to do that come together and then together can create energy, which also doesn't need to be in a sexual way, but yes, we could get into the taboo, tantric sex, et cetera. So like, could you kind of in a nutshell, like describe um, white Tantra and then red Tantra that's not necessarily sexual and then like the act of sexual Tantra? Yeah, yeah. 
first thing I want to just let everybody understand and let this land. True Tantra is not sex based. It's about introspection. It's about the return of a compassionate heart, an innocent heart. It's about how you're feeling in this moment. It's about what's actually at play for you. What's here? Can you experience this thing without judging yourself, shaming yourself? Can you allow it just to be? Can you accept it? Can you accept everything in this moment? You might not like it, but can you accept it? This is Tantra. This is why the arts of Tantra is not for everybody. That's why many people can't practice Tantra because once these things are practiced for years, like this thing is there's one of my teachers, he's a Rinpoche, uh, Rinpoche in the Bhutan, um, Tibetan Tantra. And he is, monks go decades, decades training in the monastery, never getting any knowledge about sexual practice. The first ever tantric experience I had was in meditation. I went to a tantric experience with my teacher and we meditated for 10 fucking days. Nothing about sex. We meditated to deities, to goddesses, um, to eth ethereal things. And, but it was nothing about physical sex. What's branded Tantra has been the neo-spiritual community about it's like festival, naked, let's, this is Tantra. Oh, it's like, y'all can do your thing. No judgment there, but don't label it as Tantra. You're just expressing yourself sexually. I'm a very sex positive person, but with things like Tantra, it's, it's, it's a very fine line to take those things and paint it on top of sacred practices. Because again, Tantra is a very big responsibility. It is. It's, if you have an issue here, the saying goes, it's like there's always, um, there's three sides to the story, your side, my side, and the truth. And the thing is Tantra, there's like 12 fucking sides to the story because we're thinking about everything around, we're, we're considering everything. And it takes a lot of work. So some of you might feel my intensity coming from this because it's actually like, it's been defamed, just like a lot of plant medicines nowadays, a lot of sacred things that's happening around. And this is a very important discussion that I'm sure me and Chris will get back to later in times with appropriation and other things. But Tantra has also been appropriated. And, um, but to get back to your question, white Tantra, it's just self-cultivation. How can I adorn myself? Intimacy. Can I be sovereign in my own body? Can I actually feel into my body? How do I think about myself? Think about my thoughts. For instance, um, when the series of Tuat to Handle came out, I caught myself getting into the space of like, oh, I don't like the way I looked right there. And I started feeling like the shame coming, this thing. And then I was like, wait, hold up, hold up, bro. What you talking about? Like it took me a beat to actually be like, stop fucking thinking about yourself that way. If it wasn't for tantric practices, I wouldn't even be in that space. I would stay in that self-loathing space of like, oh, why did they choose that clip of me? Oh, it's terrible. Okay, so sorry, just for my own, and I'm sure other people are thinking of this too. Like what, like this just sounds like, I mean, I'm, I'm in no way trying to water down what Tantra is, but this just sounds like um, just being aware of your thoughts. Like this sounds like sort of just like your classic traditional state of uh, meditation where you have like almost othered yourself and you can separate and you can observe yourself and you can observe the ego and you can be like, oh, this is where my mind is going. Why is it going there? How do I hold space for that and compassion and ideally work through it? So um, I guess my two questions are, is that basically what Tantra is more or less? And separate from that, when you talk about practicing Tantra, do you just bring yourself through like, sitting or laying down and meditation or is there typically more of like we're focusing on you know this chakra and I'm doing a, a sequence of breath work and like that's what makes it specifically tantra because what you're describing to me doesn't sound any different really from just like regular self-awareness meditation so what like specifically makes it tantra what specifically makes it tantra is that you're willing to go to places that most people aren't willing to go in your own darkness. Like you're okay. actually willing to go into the depths 
and not just physically, but somatically. Like you're, you're actually, it's to me, Tantra is one of the most confronting forms of shadow work. Right. It's because and that's like, you're, you're in it. And the thing is, it's like the difference between that and just natural mindfulness. Like you let the thoughts come and it goes. It's like, no, like Tantra is actually very messy because when you're confronting yourself, you can't hide. Like you cannot hide from yourself. Okay. So that's, so yeah, that's a good way to like, yeah, the mindfulness meditation and practice is sort of like, oh, okay. I'm aware that I'm doing this. And that's step one. And if you wanted to then apply a tantric practice to it, it would be like, perfect. Now let's move into shadow work. Let's sit down. Let's breathe into this mm -hmm. experience. And literally don't just say, oh, I'm feeling triggered and insecure. Yeah. I'm, I'm aware that I'm feeling triggered and insecure. And now I'm going to move on with my life. No, you say, I'm mm -hmm. aware that I'm triggered and insecure. And I'm going to sit with this until I probably start crying and bring up all the weird traumatic programs that were set in my mind that got me to this yeah. place. So it's more like you're actually dealing with it through yeah. practice. Okay, so that makes yeah, sense. You're, yeah, you're experiencing it as, as everything's happening. It's the full circle of emotions, the full spectrum. It's not just thinking, it's feeling, it's going into it. And when you're in that space, you also, you call in a different vibration for your body. This is why we do meditations to certain deities when I'm with my teacher and in my lineage of Tantra. It's we'll have a deity in front of us and we'll say mantras and prayers to this because we're taking in this vibration of this deity and elevating ourselves and seeing ourselves. It's also what Tantra is. It's yes, we live in a duality type of world. However, everything's about oneness. Like we know this, everything's non-duality. Everything, everything's one, everything comes from the same kitchen, just everything's in a different dish. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a different food. So Tantra is about, yes, we understand that everything's unity, but also in our experience, it's duality. It's both. So you, for example, and I might get the deity wrong, but like the Kala Mudra, for example, mm -hmm. which is, I believe about like, it's, that's a good one for shadow work because you're it's destruction, it's resetting. I believe there's like a breath that goes with that, which is like the tongue out and like yep. the eyes rolled back. Yep. And that's like, so you would say, okay, I'm feeling triggered. I'm feeling insecure. Instead of just moving on, I'm going to go, you know, for 20 minutes and just sit in my bedroom and I'm going to breathe into the insecurity and I want to mm -hmm. know where it came from. And then once I start realizing that, okay, this is starting to make more sense where this came from or or more details about the insecurity are coming forward, then you would say, I'm going to call forward Kala. I'm going to do the Kala Mudra and I'm going to start practicing like that breath work practice or these techniques. And I'm going to ask her to help me actually destroy this um, program sort of thing. Like, mm -hmm. is that more or less kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, so that definitely. And sometimes being with what's happening in the moment, sometimes doing nothing is the actual oh. practice, you know? So it's about discernment and intuition because we also get so fixated on doing, 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 yeah. uh, grasping, 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 that it's like that defeats the purpose of Tantra because doing takes us out of the moment. So it's having this level oh. of discernment. Tantra is very mysterious. That's why it's not for everybody. That's why many people can't actually partake. It's not just something you do, Tantra. Tantra is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle and it's been around for thousands of years. And that's why it's it's a very um, it's a practice to me it's it's um, it's changed my life so much because it brought me to be like yo what's really on your plate right now you're thinking about dinner when you haven't even eaten breakfast yet okay so okay so this makes more sense so what we've just described is white tantra so now red tantra is when two people do what we just described on their own. And now they're coming together to support each other in a tantric experience. It does yeah. not, it doesn't need to be sexual. Obviously no. sex sells. So like, yeah, you know, we like to sexualize everything. Cause again, sex sells. So that makes yeah. sense. But like, what would red Tantra then look like? Yeah. So sex, sex alchemy is a real thing. Like sex magic is a real thing, but for people to be taught those things, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's in secrecy with a lot of these lineages because it's a very wielding power. Like it's very, very sacred. Um, but on the base level of red Tantra, and you can find those people are just, 
practicing these things together. And it could be um, intimacy based. However, it's like putting energy through the body. It's like we're breathing at the same time. Right. We're, we're doing a loop together, the microcosmic orbit, as Montauk Chia talks about it. Like we're in this together. Instead of being just my breath while I'm having, I'm making love to my partner and her breath, it's like we have this one breath together. Right circling the energy, going around, being present, being curious. So essentially it's everything we've done with ourselves, being present, being curious, but now we're sharing that experience with somebody else. Like we're, we're actually going into meet, see the face of God together through these practices, through orgasm, through all of this. And it's interesting because, um, and I'm sure some people listening for sure have experienced this. Like I've definitely, you know, had sex with my partner and there have been times where like, our breathing is so synced up and it all of a sudden goes into like an entirely different experience. And I knew that I was like, oh, we are like fully connected right now. And this is like an actual like sacred energetic exchange, which is like that sexual experience. And that is, yeah, powerful. Um, It's powerful um, in the sense of, you can manifest things that way. You can heal parts of yourself that way. Like that is when you move into sex magic. And then on top of that, just as like a human pleasure experience, it's also yes. like, oh my God, this is 10 times better than just like mechanical porn star sex. You know what I mean? So like, yes, yeah, that's, um, you just described an avatar moment. You know, when they link tails yes. <laughs> and it's just like, you just described that with your partner. That's what it is. It's like that moment. And like the thing is an avatar, they didn't have, physical sex the way we think about it right. they were just intimate link tails and i was like that was it but yes oh, I love exactly that. i love like that. one one breath and, and that's that's all it is and when you're when you're single or couple doesn't matter but there are practices to really harness these energies and um for men specifically that i teach men it's um there's you do um you do semen retention practices like you don't ejaculate every single time. Like I don't ejaculate every single time when I'm in that space, whether if it's self-pleasuring or it's with a partner. Right. I hold on to my seed because the seed is so sacred. It's actually like, it's, it's a sacred elixir. Like it, our, what our body does for procreation biologically, it takes all the best of the best from our body, all the vitamins and minerals and all these things, and it puts it into our semen. So then our semen is like supercharged because the semen has to be on its best game to, to hopefully meet the egg, you know, to reproduce. It has to be in its game. So um, when men, as we're ejaculating all the time, we're losing vital life force energy. And that's why, like, the, what's the joke for men? After you come, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's actually a thing. Biologically, that's what happens. So a semen retention practice is simply just, let's say there's a scale of one to 10. And let's say 10 is like climax, one is flaccid penis. If we stay between like a six and a seven and a half, that's like a a green zone. But if we get past that, we're probably going to ejaculate. But if we can actually make love between that little um, six and seven and a half, that's like the glory zone to experience orgasms, to be able to like extend the pleasure as well. And also it's like, stop making sex an actual like game, like ticking the boxes. Like it's okay to have sex to not orgasm, to not come, and to go stop, go drink some water, go take some tea, cuddle, right. and then go back into it. Like sex has become so performative in our culture that it's taken away the magic and the sacredness from it. And now I'm not here to say like, you still gotta have your times when you're just like, I wanna ravage you, you know, I wanna yeah. ravage you and go in. Absolutely fine. However, be aware of these sacred moments to build a bond closer to what your partner. And, and also you- too, I, I just wanna say too like, also you some of you thinking it's like Chris your partner it's like these principles go with doesn't matter the kind of relationship style it could be woman and woman man and man man and woman doesn't matter not all of that like these principles apply to everybody because energy is what the basis is and I'm even I mean obviously you're not a woman you don't identify as woman and from what I know you don't have woman parts um but do you have tips for women do you work with women or have you come across um other tantric female teachers that like okay so the semen retention thing totally makes sense the breathing techniques make sense not coming to like not finishing every time makes sense. like are there things like that for women that are also helpful yeah there are i know many powerful women and amazing women who teach these things 
who I, I share with, I share them regularly on social media. Um, there's a lot of womb practices for the sacred womb for for the womb man. Like there's so many things for that. And with women, it's like say with men, um, we ejaculate, we're done, we orgasm. Because the thing is, to distinction, orgasm and ejaculation are two different things. Right. Totally. Ejaculation is the energy base of it, and ejaculation is the biological base. Women, as we know, can just keep orgasm and keep orgasm and keep going and keep going. Um, so there's a different like thing happening with this synergy. This is why it's important for men to be on your game so you can keep reaching these states of peace and pleasure. However, with women, there is work you can be done with the sacred yoni, with the womb. Um, I'm not gonna speak too much into it because I have, I have so many powerful women that I know who teach this and I would love for them to, to lead these things. However, there are practices for women as well. Yeah, we um, will set up like a whole sex magic episode then where like you and a female can come on and like we can just mm-hmm. like literally, um, we can tag team it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. I love it. But it good, yeah. um, oh, that's funny. Okay, well, I mean, this has been a pretty good conversation. I'm, I'm wondering if there's anything else that you really want to get out before we wrap it up. I like to keep these like around 20, 30, 40 minutes, and this has probably been 30 minutes or so. So if there's something else you want to touch on, and if we keep talking for 20 minutes because of it, that's great. But I'm like pretty happy with what has come up. Is there anything you feel like you want to share before we wrap it up? No, I feel, I feel great. This is a great conversation. I felt it was, it was real, you know, it wasn't premeditated. It was just what's in the moment, you know, and that's, this is what life's about. And this is what I love. Uh, one thing I would say is that uh, if any of you um, ever numb out and go and watch Netflix, go check out Too Hot to Handle season three. Um, I have some cool features on there, essentially teaching some of the tools that we're speaking about in here to the cast members of the season to how to breathe the move energy to connect without sex. So uh, if you're curious about more, go check it out. Yeah, and I like that. And it, it's funny you just said that because when you were talking before, I was totally going to mention, what do you teach the people on Too Hot to Handle? Because I've seen that show and those are like, no offense, <laughs> but those are like this sort of mechanical porn star in and out, let's just fuck type of people. So yeah. if anybody listening, um, which I'm sure we've all been in that space once or twice in our lifetime and there's no judgment there. And personally, sometimes I'm in that space and sometimes I wanna like have, you know, that deep connective breath work, energetic sex with my partner. It's like, yeah, we should be toggling back and forth, I guess it's probably healthier, but like, I was totally gonna say, what do you teach those people? Because they probably, you know, could really use some tips and, um, I mean, yeah, I'm sure in the show you talk about it and we kind of just did talk about it, but if there's any other tools yeah. that in mind that you want to get in before we wrap, um, now's the time. Yeah, I just break it down like with them and it's, it's, I focus on the breath piece and also changing your state. So what I mean by that, it's like, let's say uh, for them, it's like if they're feeling super horny, super horned up and they just can't control themselves, literally get up and run to the other room. Like go do a sprint somewhere. Like I actually mean it, like change your state your vibrational state, shake, breathe, do those things. And um, with them, it's more about just slowing down. Like that's what I was like, just slow down, like slow down. Like you'll get there. Like, like literally you gotta, you gotta preheat the oven. Like first, you can't just bake bread with a cold ass oven. Right. So this is gonna help you better if you actually just slow down. So that's what I do. And then there's like a few other practices that I always encourage for like um, couples. Like there was some of you will see in um, it's, you can like have like a bucket, like you can initiate intimacy without sex. Like let's say you take a shower with your partner and you're washing each other, but you're doing it not with the intention of having sex, just actual love and adornment. I'm gonna wash my partner's back with this washcloth around, rinse them off, gently, things like that. So it's like, um, I just pretty much tell the cast to slow down as best as I can. And, um, and they actually were very receptive. Like, like I still keep in contact with a lot of the dudes. Cool, I love that. Okay, well, Brendan Durrell, um, you can find him at B-R-E-N-D-E-N-D-U-R-E-L on Instagram. You can find him on Too Hot to Handle, season three on Netflix. He was also on season one and two a little bit, right? Just two at the end, yeah. Okay, so two and three. Um, Yeah, super cool stuff. 
check out his Instagram, um, reach out if you're interested. Don't fall for the scammers because he's got a few now, which we're so proud about. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess, thank you. We will have you back at some point to talk about more sex magic when we balance it out with the divine feminine teacher as well. Beautiful. Let's awesome. get it. Appreciate you, Chris. Yeah, you too. We'll chat soon. I'm just going to end this recording now. So thanks, guys. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, the accessible version, um, all of his information will be below as well. So we will chat soon. See ya.